Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Explain it to us. Tell us the answers. Tell us how to interpret your words. Tell us how to get it right. Give us the key that will unlock the door. This parable of the wheat and the weeds tells the story of two crops intermingled. The good seed of the wheat is planted by the sower. It will grow up and produce good things. The other seed is a weed intermingled among the wheat. And the master tells the slaves to leave the weeds to grow up among the wheat, to allow the evil plants to exist commingled with the good plants because to pull up the evil plants would uproot the good wheat, and all the good crop would be lost as well. As a new gardener, I heard this parable with some confusion. What kind of gardener doesn't weed? And what kind of farmer can't tell their crop from a weed? At least that's what I thought, until a colleague of mine mentioned bearded darnel. Sometimes known as false wheat, darnel is nearly indistinguishable from wheat until harvest time, when its seeds turn black. This sneaky weed is not only nutritionally worthless, competing with the wheat for space and nutrients. No, it's worse than that. This evil plant is actively harmful to people. It produces dizziness and nausea, and even death when consumed in large enough quantities. Darnel is wheat's evil twin, because it looks exactly like wheat. Until the grain matures, there's no way to pull it out without killing the wheat. Darnel was a serious problem for farmers until modern times. And so when Jesus tells of weeds sown among the wheat, his advice to leave them until harvest is not some sort of hippie permaculture, Bob Ross happy accident. It's the only option unless they are willing to rip out the whole crop. And so Jesus is telling the crowd what the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is not like anything they have experienced before, but Jesus uses the things that they have experienced to teach them about the coming kingdom. To teach them that they don't get to know who among them are truly children of God and who are children of the evil one. All this information is not revealed to them until the end of the age. And the same is true here in our own time. We don't get to judge what is good and what is bad. To their ears and to mine, this sounds pretty intense. I like to think I know right from wrong. I like to think I can tell good from evil. I liked to get it right. Like the disciples, I say, explain it to me. Tell me the answers. Tell us how to interpret your words. Give us the key that will unlock the door. I hear this parable and I immediately start thinking, who are the wheat and who are the weeds? I start looking around, are you a child of God? Am I? But this line of thinking for the disciples and for all of us sends us down the wrong track. We are so easily drawn into the task of judgment, eager to discern the wheat from the weeds, even when we have been instructed to let them all come to fruition. Because we as humans have to be reminded again and again that judgment is not our job. From the first stories of humans in the Garden of Eden, we have been drawn to the knowledge of good and evil. We have been wanting to be able to say, I am right and you are wrong. But we are not the sower, that is the Son of Man, and we are not the reapers, those are the angels. We are only the seed, and as seed, our job is to grow and to allow the fruits of God's work to come to fruition in the end of time. Amen.